Well, we'll talk about vitamin D. It's a hormone. Who knew? Uh, so vitamin, and this is certainly the vitamin of the year, right, or the jour. And what doesn't it do? But first, let's say we got the vitamin D vocabulary straight. Vitamin D3, and that's what should be in the supplements that you're taking and giving your patients. That is, a synonym is cholecalciferol. Vitamin D2, which is in food and sometimes sold as a supplement, but not as effective, is ergocalciferol. Then when you get a blood test, what you're getting or should be getting is 25-hydroxy vitamin D3. Or you can write it out chemically like that, or chemically like the second way, or you could call it 25-hydroxycholecalciferol, or you could call it calcidiol, all synonyms. Then there's 1,25-dihydroxyvitamin D3 with its chemical formula. That's calcitriol. Calcitriol is the active form, but you've got to measure the calcidiol. It's analogous to the DHEA-S situation. When you order DHEA, you always order DHEA-S because that's the repository average form. So we got the vocabulary out of the way. Now the math. We usually talk about international units, but the tendency in this, probably like everything else, will be to go towards metric system, and one microgram equals 40 IUs, hence in milligrams, 40,000 IUs. So if you're reading some literature, you may see metric system. Then in the United States, this 25-hydroxy vitamin D is measured in nanograms per milliliter. The rest of the world is in nanomoles per liter. So when you read the medical literature, you've got to see what units are being used. Is it nanograms or nanomoles? To convert nanomoles, you just divide by 2.5. So again, you've got to be aware of that. Now another thing with numbers. Approximately 100 IUs of D3 raise calcidiol 1. So 1,000 IUs would raise it 10, 2,000, 20, approximately. What's vitamin D deficiency? Different definitions, less than 20. Nanograms. What's vitamin D insufficiency? Still a less than 32. What's the reference range? Maybe 32 to 100. Where should you really be? That's certainly 50 to 80. What about 80 to 100? There's some debate in the upper end of the range. But certainly 60 and above. Now, we know you can make vitamin D from sunlight. But you know, I hate to say it, but the sun is overrated. To get where you want to go, let's say, say you want to make vitamin D from the sun, here's what you have to do. You have to play volleyball in a bikini in Maui at noon for an hour and then don't take a shower till dinner. That way you'll make 25, I don't know if everybody really should wear that bikini here of course, but um, that way you'll make 25,000 IUs. Much to my amazement, as I got into the world of vitamin D, like hopefully we all have, in San Diego, surfers, even in the spring and fall, not wearing a full wetsuit, would often, almost always be low. Why is that? They're getting their sun exposure while in the ocean. They have to sit on the skin and the oil on the skin for a while. So that's what I meant by sun's overrated. You can do it, but it's hard. So sun hits the skin, you make some pre-vitamin D, and the liver converts it to 25-hydroxy, and then the kidney converts it to 125-dihydroxy. Vitamin D, of course, is part of calcium metabolism and regulation, but when calcium and bone are taken care of, if you have enough vitamin D for that, all the rest, after you fill up that tank, all the rest goes to the rest of the body. Every cell in the body has a vitamin D receptor. It's a, very, it's a major player in physiology. And so take care of bone. Now you've got the rest of it to regulate every other cell. What's the cheapest and easiest way in medicine that would save the most lives and, and save the most money, and save them on and on? If you had a, and I think at this point, without a doubt, it would be treat vitamin D. If you gave everybody in the United States one capsule a week, of 50,000 IUs of D3, without exaggeration, you would cut cancer in half, not to mention autoimmune disease. 
diabetes, etc. That sounds like such an astounding statement. There is literature to back that up. Here is your bar graph of the different cancers and what level of 25-hydroxy calcidiol do you need to prevent what percent. So let's take a look here, and we'll break this down more at the pink breast cancer line. If you hit a level of 32, again, that's just barely sufficiency, you'd eliminate 30%. If you hit a level of 50, you'd eliminate 83% of breast cancer. And on and on. And the references for each line are down below here. So each line has a, has a study or a series of studies to back it up. What about colon cancer? To eliminate a third of it, hit 32. To eliminate 60% of it, hit 42. What about type 1 diabetes, autoimmune disease? Can you eliminate type 1 diabetes? I'll show you some studies. What, again, this is prevention, not treatment. What about MS? Can you eliminate MS? Well, you can get rid of 54% by hitting a level of 55. So where did we get our old ideas about how much vitamin D is needed? It's back here, rickets. If you can hit a level of 20, you'll eliminate almost all of rickets. And that's why milk, you know, how, mu how much uh, vitamin D is in milk? Anyone know how many units per glass? What? A hundred, you know, a hundred or two hundred, but usually about a hundred per glass. And we're talking about thousands and thousands needed. So there's a vitamin D deficiency pandemic going on. And a balanced diet, you can't get it, or living near the equator is not enough. And everyone's at risk for the skeletal and non-skeletal consequences. And studies everywhere in the United States and Europe of the vitamin D deficiency. The more melanin you have in your skin, the harder it is to make vitamin D from the sun. In Europe, estimated between 28 and 100 percent of adults are vitamin D deficient. In the United States, 36 percent age 18 to 29. Uh, 42 percent African American women age 15 to 49. On and on. So it's big. And again, why don't we have enough vitamin D? Again, we evolved naked in the sun, uh, close to the equator, but clo clo clothing and sunscreen. Uh, above 37 degrees latitude, you really don't make any in the winter. The more body fat you have, the less vitamin D you make. The older you are, the less you make. Uh, a lot of prescription drugs interfere with. What about food? There's really not too much in food. Um, cod liver oil, well, it has some herring. Uh, not usually, herring, and, herring has, 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 80, has a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's the most. It's usually not a big mover on the menu, though. Um, mackerel, you know, there's a little bit in some of these fish. 